I don't know about you, but I absolutely love this time of year, the springtime. It's just such a wonderful time, newness all around, the leaves on the trees, the buds coming, the blossom. I just love it. Well, my birthday's on the first day of spring, and I can remember as a child feeling quite special. I don't know why, but I felt I was special because of that. Well, it's a time of new beginnings, the spring, and God is a wonderful, wonderful teacher. He uses pictures and examples to illustrate truths to us. As an infant teacher, I could see how little people really needed illustrations, examples to get across concepts to them, help, to, help them to understand concepts. And it's not really any different for big people. We need them just as much. And the new life every year that spring brings is just so wonderful. It's, and it's such a picture to us of God's love for us, God's new life. Do you know, I think I enjoyed visits to farms that we used to go to in spring to see chicks and piglets and lambs, even more than my children did. I just loved it. One time we went, a sheep had been in labor for some time. Uh, I, could, I could empathize with her, poor old girl. She was having twins and everything was taking such a long time. And we watched for ages, hoping to see something happen. But then we had to go home for lunch and I thought, oh no, we're all going to miss this. And we prayed and asked the Lord just to speed things up particularly for her, but for us. And then two little baby lambs were born and I've never ever forgotten it. This was years ago, but it was just a wonderful moment. And everything about the spring points us to the new life that's available for each one of us. And that's why we need to think about the message of Easter. But before new life can come, death has to come. And that's the winter picture. Things die back, leaves fall, cold and evenings are long and dark but we all have to die to all our old life wanting to live our own way have our own way and we need to come to a place where we can admit that we need God to help us to be different and to live differently we can't change anything about ourselves only God can I can remember so many years in the past, probably in my teenage years, making New Year resolutions to maybe read my Bible and get to know about God, who it spoke about, to be a nicer person, to be kinder, more thoughtful, to be honest and less selfish. But as I'm sure you know, New Year resolutions never last. They just fade away long before the spring comes, usually by about the second week of January. Well, one spring morning, many, many years ago now, the good, I heard the good news, the gospel for the first time. This is really the Easter story. Now, up to that point, I had absolutely no idea that Jesus's death on the cross had actually anything to do with me at all. I don't think I had ever asked, just like those men Colin was talking about, I had never asked, who was this man? Who was Jesus? I had never asked that question. It's amazing, isn't it, that you can sit through perhaps assemblies at school, prayer times. I studied the Acts of the Apostles for GCSE and I even got an A grade. And yet I didn't have any idea about the meaning of Easter. Then I went away to college and I met Christians who prayed for me and really for the first time told me that Jesus had died on the cross to pay the price of everybody's sin and that was mine as well. It was an absolute revelation to me. And when he rose on Easter Sunday, his life became available to me. But I had to repent, turn away from my old life and exchange it for his life, the life of the perfect son of God. So I asked Jesus to come and live his life in me. And he did. And he started to change me from the inside. No more New Year resolutions needed. It's, and it's such a miracle, I, I still think of this, to find that you're slowly changing and becoming the sort of person that you always wanted to be, but you never could be. And that's just the beginning of a new life. And you have to walk every day, putting Jesus first, saying sorry when you fail, asking for the life and the help of the Holy Spirit of God 
to make you like Jesus. Now, another picture Jesus used was as him as the good shepherd and his followers as his sheep. Jesus has laid his life down for us, his sheep, so we can trust him to lead us and care for us all throughout our lives. I just want to read a little bit from John 10. This is Jesus speaking, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and he walks, <clears throat> sorry, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, they will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant. And I can identify with that, that was me all those years ago. But my testimony now is a bit later in the verse. I'll just read another couple of verses and you must read it for yourselves at home when you get home. This is in, if I can turn the page, verse 10. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And that's my testimony. And verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Wonderful, isn't it? Anyway, read it for yourselves when you get home and ask yourself, is this your testimony? Do you know Jesus as your good shepherd? Do you know his voice? Do you have this rich and satisfying life? Or do you feel a bit like those in verse six? You don't really know what this is all about. Well, if you find that that is your testimony, talk to someone, ask someone to pray with you and ask Jesus to really reveal himself to you as the good shepherd this Easter. And um, I've asked Colin, could we sing the Lord's My Shepherd? <laughs> 